God say good morning to everyone. Good morning. Good time has come to call the house of order. It's a blessing to be here on this morning. Are you happy that God woke you up this morning? Let's give you a hand. Uh, 
starting this six for Bible study and then seven for choir rehearsal. Amen. 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 Good to us, God. You've been better to 
us than we've been to ourselves. Thank you, Father, for that you are the Almighty God, the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. God, you are so merciful. For your grace and your mercy, follow me all the days of my life. Lord, I thank you, Heavenly Father. When I woke up this morning, God, I got out of my bed yeah. on my own. And it was not my final resting place. It could have been. Lord, you've been so good to us, God. Lord, you watch over us all through the night and all through the day. Lord, you keep us in perfect peace. Lord, you allow us to see the sun shine each and every day. Lord, you've been so good, God. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for everything you've done, God, everything you yet to do for us, God. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for allowing us traveling grace to get to this place to the day, God. Thank you, Heavenly Father, you allowed us to travel on the highways and the byways to just get to our final place right now, God. Lord God, you've been so good to us, God. Lord God, thank you. Thank you. Oh God, thank you. Thank you, God, for so many things, God. Lord, as I look over my life, God, I look back and I wonder how I got over. How did I get over, God? But I know they was you, God. It was you, God, that did what you did over 2,000 years ago, God, when you hung on Calvary. Lord God, you could have came down. But Lord God, I thank you that you stayed on the cross. Lord, and you went down and took it to him. And you stayed there three days, God. But on the third day, you rose. With all power in your hand, God. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you, God, for everything you've done for us, Lord, Heavenly Father. Lord, God, thank you for our children right now, God. Lord, God, they need you right now, doing this time here right now. Lord, God, sometimes you go astray, God, but I know, God, you can make a way for us, oh, Heavenly Father. Lord, you can make a way out of no way, oh, Heavenly Father. Thank you. For your, for your grace, God. Thank you for keeping us the way you are kept us, oh, Heavenly Father. Thank you, God, for everything you've done for us, God. Thank you for our pastor right now, God. Lord, give him the freedom of his lambs, God. Thank you for this building, God. Lord, let your spirit reign spring. Let your Holy Spirit come into this place right now, God. And occupy each and every one of us. Fill us with the Holy Ghost, God. Lord, have mercy, God. Touch us in the divine way, God. Touch our souls, touch our minds, God. Get our hearts and minds on the same page, God. Sometimes our minds may go astray, God, but our hearts need to be on the same page as you, God. Touch us in the divine way, God. Touch us in the position right now, God. Lord, let his fingers grow in a special way, God. Touch us right now, God. Let the Holy Spirit reign through this building right now, God. Touch us all right now, God. Lord God, as I end this prayer, God, I'm going to say thank you. For so many wonderful things, God. So many wonderful things you have done for us, God. Lord, I pray your precious name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.
going to do some of it, but we just want to get you into the mindset and the right heart spirit to receive the word of God. Amen. Amen.
have to go through it. They said they whooped him all night long. They said they spit on him. They gambled over his road. And, and then we get a chance to call that what? Beautiful. Lord have mercy. Now, not what they did to him, but what was beautiful was this God, this Savior, Jesus, didn't have to do it. But he did. He didn't have to take it. But he did. He didn't have to bleed. But he did. He didn't have to die. But he, he did. That's what's so beautiful. Because we couldn't do it. David couldn't do it. Moses couldn't do it. Who would redeem man? But a true and living Savior. Jesus. Oh, how great the price you paid for my. I heard the preacher say in Bible class, we come to worship God in here, but out there we serve God. What did you do for somebody this week that you didn't have to do? Did you do anything? Have you cast any bread? Have you cast any bread upon the wall? Have you put anything in the ground to reap what you sow? What did you do? But Jesus did. Lord have mercy. All right. We're going to do one more and then we be gone. Praise the Lord. We're going to do one more and then we, we're going to bid you farewell. <laughs>
We need you on our job. Yes, Lord. We need you, my son. Yes, Lord. To lead us and guide us. Yes, Lord. In every step of the way. Yes, Lord. We need you in the dark. Yes, Lord. We need you to be a light unto our pathway. Yes, Lord. We need you, my master, to be your help unto our feet. Seems like, Lord God, when we stray away from you, yes, Lord. we find ourselves in a little turn, oh. But we know that you are able to bring us back. Yes, Lord. And bring us back to the center state. Yes, Lord. We want to thank you, my master. That you have not left us, nor have you forsaken us. Yes, Lord. Even though we have not done all that you signed our hands. To do. Yes, Lord. But because of your mercy Mercy's and Lord. your grace, yes, Lord. you let our golden moments yes, Lord. go along a little while alone. Yes, Lord. We don't want to come to tell you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You bread on our table. Yes, Lord. Your water when we are thirsty. Yes, Lord. Your friend when we are friendly. Yes, Lord. Your good company keeper. Yes, Lord. Your provision around our ways. Yes, Lord. And you are provision over our heads. Yes, Lord. Oh, we are going to tell you thank you. Thank you. Lord God, now as you find ourselves. Yes, Lord. Similar here at New Salem Fraser Church.
I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly, who are of thee, to whom the reproach it was a burden. Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee. I will save her that halteth and gather her that was driven out. I will give thee them praise and fame in every land of where they have been put to shame. And at that time, I will bring you again, even in the time that I gather you. For I will make your, your name and praise among all the people of the earth. When I turn back your captivity before your eyes, saith the Lord. <clears throat> Thought for this morning, no matter how long it takes, give God time and he will turn it around. No matter how long it takes, you give God time, he will turn it around. May not come when you want him, but he's always on time. One writer said he's the only one who can be late and still be on time. Amen. Give God time. And sooner or later he will turn it around. <laughs> Job said a man born of a woman is but a few days and they are full of trouble. And many of us are finding now that those words we did on the mark because it looks like every time we turn around on every day of our life. Something new, something strange, something to disturb us. Uh, and it looked like we're getting getting used to tragedy because it has become a way of life. We barely get one eye dry before the other one starts crying. We barely get one side covered before the other side pops over. We barely get one shoe on before the other one pops off. It's always something. So many bills that a male man can put in anybody building in by the mailbox, and we won't notice because we all got. Too many bills. Mm -hmm. And so we come to services like this and we sing songs that encourage ourselves. Trouble in my way, I have to cry sometimes. But I lay awake at night saying that's all right because Jesus, he'll fix it after a while. Mm -hmm. some, some folks say, I don't know why I have to cry sometimes. I don't know why I have to sigh sometimes, but there'll be a brighter day when trouble gets out of my way. I don't know why I know, but I'll find out by and by. But notice why these songs that test our hardships, they also offer us the hope that no matter what we're going through, if we trust God, things will get better. And as a result, we continue to try to live like Christians despite being surrounded by so many wolves in sheep clothing. The Bible tells us things to do. He said, bless, bless those who persecute you. Pray for those who spite to use you and turn the other cheek when you're smited. But after a while, you finally get tired of other folks slap you for free. Are you all here with me? All right. Sometimes you want to be on the other side of the hand that's doing the slapping. I need some help here, y'all. How many of y'all ever feel like slapping somebody to say amen? Amen. <laughs> but that's when we get dangerously close. You know, sometimes slapping folks make you feel good. I don't care how saved you are. Y'all looking at me funny. I'm just telling the truth. <laughs> Listen. But we get danger but close to allow him Satan to use us for his glory. Instead of honoring God. And that we at that point we either at the point of a breakout with the devil or a breakthrough for the Lord. And so then, like now, it is decision time. Paul warns us in Monsters us in Galatians 6, he says, and let us be not weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And I came to tell you today, no matter how bad it is, don't give up. Hold on, because in due season, whatever, what is due season, whatever the Lord says, do in your life, it will, you will reap. And so now we have to dig down in the deepest part of our faith. We must know who and whose we are beyond the shadow of a doubt. Because it is decision times. At times like these, the Lord is not allowing our faith to be tested just to tease us. But he's allowing our faith to be tested to show us who we really are and who we are not. You see, you, you, see, you are who you are, not who you think you are. You all, you, all, you all just missed that. See, if we were who we thought we are, none of us would have any problems. All of us be rich and on our way to heaven. But the problem is we're all sinners saved by faith through grace. I need a little help in this And I sit down. If you are truly born again people, you have to be like Job and just wait on the Lord, trusting that no matter what 
what you go through today, tomorrow God will turn things around. Amen. I came and I didn't care with those who don't have. I didn't come to encourage with the rich. I didn't come to encourage those that are open to bless, but I came to talk to those who are going through, Amen. whose hearts have been broken, who are fighting their best fight. Amen. Amen. But look like it's getting so heavy, it's hard to hold on to. Amen. I want you to know today that sooner or later, no matter what you're going through, no matter how many tears you cry, after a while, God is going to turn things around. Amen. In the words of my famous singer, Dal Cole, that you're going through now because God is preparing you for something you cannot handle right now. He's making you ready just because he can. My father told me, son, I'm hooping you now because I care for you. And he said, when you get older, you're going to look back on your life and say thank you. Well, I come here today to tell my daddy thank you and say, I wish you hooped me a little bit more. Are you all, are you all here with me? In this text, I got to get out of here. We have a word from the minor prophet Zephaniah. Okay. And he's not minor because of the value of what he says. He's minor because of the volume of what he says. Again, he only writes three chapters. But they're three impactful chapters. He writes about judgment and then encouragement along three lines. First of all, that God is sovereign over everybody. Are y'all with me? Which means he's going to judge his and those that are not his. Then he's going to punish the wicked and vindicate the righteous. He said, we all go in the fire together, but we ain't going to come out the same way. Somebody hear what I just said. We all go in the fire together. We're not going to come out the same way. Finally, he said, God will bless those who trust and repent in him. Zephaniah, a temporary Josiah, was raised in during the debacle of the reign of King Manasseh and his son. During those times, Israel, the chosen of God, had turned away from God and began to worship idols. They had places they called the high places. Amen. Well, they were too high for God. And so they went in and they worshipped Baal and Asherah and those other idol gods. Gods who were made by hands who had no power but to sit there because they were made out of wood, iron, and brass. And y'all hear with me? In those days, they were doing anything that was pleasing in their own eyes. They were doing what was right. According to their own faith, they were even sacrificing children, living in idolatry, living in all kinds of sin, having abandoned the word of God, much like we are doing today. That's why when Paul comes to write, he said, Brother, my heart and desire for Israel is that they might be saved, but they being ignorant of God's righteousness, have gone about to establish their own rights and not submit themselves to the rights of God. And we've got many folk going around misquoting scriptures thinking they're honoring God. Amen. But they have taken the word of God to make it suit themselves. Amen. Amen. Are Amen. Are you all, are, 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 are you, rather than trying to make our lives fit the word of God, we're trying to make the word of God fit our lives. Are you, are, are you all hear me? We keep on trying to somehow figure out how to make God fit our schedule. But watch this. God is too big to fit your schedule. You got to make sure you can fit his. Amen. Are you all, are you all, are you all here? We keep on praying, calling ourselves praying, and just giving God a hundred do list. I need some help. I'll be through here in a minute. And so, and so Zephaniah watches this, and, 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 and he begins to see uh, the hand of God turning. He begins to see God's blessing become amenable. He's beginning to see the people of God beginning to look like the world. Are y'all hearing me? And so watch this. Just because the people of God live in a certain place, they thought God was only going to judge those who live somewhere else because they belong by God. But in 2 Chronicles, he didn't say if those folk over there. He said if my people, which are called by my name, those are the ones I got a problem with. You see, the lie is opposed to that. The thief 
is opposed to steal. The murderer is opposed to kill because that's what they profess to be. He said, well, my problem is with that group who call themselves my children, who call themselves living by my name, who are dishonoring me in the world. Yeah. 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 with me. Yeah. A lot of us are sitting in the world hiding in the church. <laughs> On the way to hell. said God now has grown tired of seeing his folk look like other folk. He said if you're going to be a child of God, it ought to be something distinctive about you. My father had nine children. Say said every one of them I know that. He said I don't care what my wife said. I know that they're mine because I can look at them and tell. <laughs> and if you're a child of God, it doesn't matter what the world say about you. God can look at you and tell you his child. Are you all still here? Yes, sir. Seven, I writes to let me remind them that God is offended by the sins of his people. Mm -hmm. And though they are his, they will not escape punishment. Mm -hmm. Are you all here with me? Yes, yes. You can't sin in the world and hide in the church and thank God don't look over because you belong to him. Mm -hmm. He said the punishment is going to be painful. Mm -hmm. But it is punishment with a purpose. Because it's redemptive and not punitive. Because of the will of God that all men might be saved. He even wants the sinner saved. Amen. Are, you all, are you all here with me? Amen. And he said, now, those that are saved, as you watch the wicked suffer in that inevitable end, he said, and I'll give you comfort. Because sometimes it seems like evil is out of control. Are you, all, are you all here with me? And that's why I say we all may go into fight together. We're not going to come out the same. Listen. He may spend the yes while you are free on this side of judgment to disobey God's commandments. On the back side of judgment, you are not free to escape the consequences. Are you all here with me? Yes, God forgives sin. But God does not remove the consequences of the sin you commit. Are y'all hear me? Because to do so would be a license to sin. If you go into the club and get in a fight with beer bottles, and you cut somebody across the face that, that stop, that beer bottle, you may come out and apologize to God, repent fully, and repent that person. And that person may fully forgive you. But what? That's God still there. Because the scar is a consequence of the sin. Are, are, are y'all are here with me? But he said, on the, by the same token, God does not forget those who are faithful to him. Sometimes in his journey, look like God didn't forget about you. Look like God just won't hear you. Look like God turned a deaf into your prayer. But he the same God who said in Isaiah 46 that there shall come a time that before you call me. I heard yeah. And what do you expect as your prayer? Let me tell you today, sometimes God not answer you today because he answered you yesterday. <laughs> See, you just prayed about it today and God fixed it last week. Oh, yeah. Are y'all here with me? Yeah. God did not forget those who remain faithful. Mm -hmm. And so we're reminded today to be in prayer and stay in the race. And keep holding on. Despite your circumstances. Despite what you're going through. Despite how bitter your tears. Despite how wide your river deep your valley. David said even in the valley of the shadow that he can say the Lord is my shepherd. He said I know it's a valley of the shadow of death. But when I got into Jesus I saw green pastures. In the same valley of death when I with the Lord, he laid me down beside the still water. Right. Even though it's a valley of trouble and torment because death ran all around, he said, yet the Lord restored my soul. And I stopped by to tell you, no matter what's going on, when the world is stretching out of you, be still and know that God is God. He can restore your soul in the midst of your trouble. Isaiah said that God will keep you in perfect peace to mind and stay on me because he trusted Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Indeed. 
Then notice you got to trust him. You can't go to God wishing. You got to go to God in the face. See, when you wish it, you're dealing with something you don't think going to happen. Yes, Lord. But Paul said, now faith in the substance thing, hope for the evidence of being not seen. He said, you got to believe God so much that God is real in your life. That's why the psalm writer said, there are some things I may not know. There are some places I may not go. But that one thing is I'm sure that my God is real for I can feel him in my life. No matter what you say or what you read, God is real because I feel him in my soul. It's not your testimony. It's what I got on the inside. Oh, son, right? It says something within me that holds the rain. Something within me that banishes pain. Something in me I can't understand all that I know. And that is something. <laughs> it's something within. And so something I said, yeah. You're going to go through something because you made God angry. And right now, America is going through something. Yeah. This nation that was founded on religious freedom, where you can't serve God no more. This nation that said one nation under God, where we can't get along no more. Are y'all here with me? Yeah. This nation that said in God we trust. We don't trust God no more. Yeah. I stand in my and I said, God now has got tired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he let us go through something. Yeah. And so it does not matter how saved you are. Yeah. You still got corona. Yeah. <laughs> does not matter how holy you are. Yeah. They still kill the folk on your street. Yeah. Does not matter how you pray at night. <laughs> they still bring it in your house. Yeah. It does not matter how long you've been singing in the choir. Yeah. You will still have trouble and heartaches. Yeah. But I'm glad for the believers that the Lord said these things I tell you. That you might have peace. That in the world you will have tribulation. But be a good cheer. For I will overcome the world. I'll stop by to tell you. You may not see it right now. But God has already tried to tell you. You right now, but he has already calmed your fears. You may not understand it right now, but God has already brought you through. You may not know it right now, but God has already delivered you. All you got to do is hold on to the while and wait on the Lord. That's why David said, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he will strengthen that heart. Wait on the Lord. Sometimes in his life, your burden get heavy, but the same psalm said, you got to lift up your head, oh ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in, who is the king of glory, the Lord strong in might, the Lord strong in battle, so Zephaniah writes, in the chapters, Yes, God is angry. Yes, God's judging on the way. Uh, but you don't have to worry. Uh, if you hang in a little while, uh, sooner or later, uh, God will turn around. Uh, he may not come when you want him, uh, but he will be on time. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, he's the same one uh, that turned around for Daniel. Uh, down in the loud end, uh, he's the same one uh, that turned around. In the valley of the shadow of death, he the same one that turned up his sand down in Pharaoh's fire. He the same one that turned around for the woman to issue blood. It took her 12 years, but she heard that Jesus was passing by, and she made up in her mind if I can touch the human of God, I may not see him face to face. Oh, my God. 
will be made whole. It doesn't matter what you're going through. If you give God time, if you wait on the Lord, He will.
He said, I stood and spoke to the water and told the water to bring forth fish and the fire. Adam was not there. I spoke to the naked dirt and told the dirt to cover itself, put the clothes on, put the grass on yourself, and then dress yourself up with trees and flowers. Adam was not there. When I separated light from darkness, Adam was not there. When I scooped out the ocean with my hand and made the water with my garments, Adam was not there. When I made the cattle, the birds, and bees, the flowers, and trees, Adam was not there. And so when I put Adam in the garden, Adam didn't have full appreciation of all I'd done for him. So Adam never saw the death of my love. That's how Church, I'm about to close. We failed to see what God did for us because we were not there. That's why the writer said, Were well, you there when they crucified my Lord? He said, Because Adam didn't understand the depths of my love, I put the tree there. Because when Adam sinned against my will, he was going to need a Savior. And his soul did Adam sin. And he was coming. I cursed the devil. I cursed the woman, but I told them the seed of the woman shall rule the serpent head, and his head shall rule the heel. If I had not allowed Adam to sin, he would have never met Jesus. If he had never met Jesus, he could have died on the cross. If Jesus did die, I would have held back John 10, saying, But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. If Jesus had died, I would have held back Paul right here to set me out from the body and to be present with the Lord. Ain't God all right? If Jesus had died, John could have told you in the book of Revelation, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. I give unto every man according to his work. And so I allowed him to come that he may uh, endure exile uh, to know uh, that Jesus Christ uh, will restore peace uh, and God all right uh, and that's why uh, on the way here uh, I woke up I see uh, and I see as if under us uh, a child is born uh, under us uh, a son is given uh, and he shall be called one of the uh, mighty God uh, the Prince of Peace, the everlasting Father. It does not matter how much the people in your life, if you get it like Jesus, he will bring you peace. That's why David said in Psalm 27 that the Lord is my life and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? In Psalm number 30, he kept on happy. He said, We've been made in the fourth night. But in the morning, sure I'm gonna come. In 37 1, he got a little more happy. Saying, Fret not thyself, because of evil doers. He went on in the same chapter, and he looked back over his life. He said, I walked with young, but now I'm old. Never seen the right for Satan, nor the seed bed for bread. And finally, in Psalm 23, he Because my rod and my staff they come in. I'm about to go to Salem. And I heard the writer say that Jesus keep her in the cross. For there is a precious fountain her and free to all her of healing strength that flowed from Calvary Mountain. I'm going to do Salem, but I want you to go her despite what you're going through, despite how long you cry, despite how
Make sure you welcome our visitors. 